Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Ahu here with KissAnalog.com. Today, it's going to be fun. We're going to set the bias on this thing. I'm going to show you the math. We're going to look at that real quick. And then I'm going to show the schematic. Bring the camera over here after that. And I will show you how I'm physically going to do that. And uh, I also have another board, which I'll, I'll point out a couple things on that board as well. So let's just uh, go ahead and jump into the math. Take a look at that. Okay, so we're going to say power is equal to 20 watts. And then we're going to say power is also equal to I squared times R. Okay, R is going to be 8 ohms. We're going to say 8 ohms to start with. And when we know the the power will be doubled in the four ohms. So, okay, so what we do is we're gonna say 20, divide both sides by R, which is divide both sides by eight, is equal to I squared. Okay? So 20 watts divided by eight ohms is equal to I squared. So we got to take the square root of both sides, and I'm going to flip it over. So I'm going to say I is equal to the square root of 20 watts divided by 8 ohms. Okay, that's how I find my current. Okay, now this isn't. This is the output current for 20 watts. This is, and this would be the max current going through those transistors. So what we're going to say is I is equal to the square root of 20 watts divided by 8. But really, when we find that I, we're going to take I divided by 2 is the bias current. So that's I bias. Okay? So let's do that math. Okay, now I have my calculator out. I'm going to go 20 watts, enter that, and divide it by 8 ohms, divide. Okay, then we've got to take the square root of that, and that's our current. So that's the total current. Now divide that by 2, and this is the bias current. But now since I have two transistors sharing that, I'm going to divide that by 2 again, 2 divide. And that's the current through a transistor. And now that's going to go through that 0.22 ohm resistor and create the voltage I'm going to look for. So let's see what that voltage should be. So 0.22 ohm times that. So about 87 millivolts. That's what I want to set it to. So there we go. All right. So did that make sense? We come up with the current for the output, right, into 8 ohms. If we say the bias current for class A is half the output current, because the bias current's gonna be here, we're gonna swing up twice as much, come down all the way close to zero. Now, that's what we did in this equation. But, really, if if this heat sink was bigger, if this case was bigger, you know, say 17 inch by 17 inch, like the old style uh, amplifiers, then I could have gone a little bit higher. Maybe say, look, instead of class A swinging from the bias point to 2x to close to zero, we're going to go down to say 20% of the bias current and then up to, you know, 20% away from 2x. So that way we operate in the linear region. But because this uh, amplifier has plenty of headroom, I think I felt safe operating the way I did. And actually, I looked at the um, distortion over here with the Keithley, and the THC didn't really change much. Uh, it didn't really, I, it was not noticeable as I changed from the different bias currents and so on. So I'm gonna say that I think that's okay. And that's bias for 20 watts. This amplifier actually has more headroom than that, and. I'll show you the max power. We're going to come more look at that. We'll talk about that at the end of the video. Okay? So let's just jump into that. And, uh, oh, and so the next thing I want to show you is the schematic. I kind of want to show you 
where things are on the schematic, what they look like. So let's go just look at the schematic right now, okay? All right, guys. So you may have seen the other videos where I've talked about the schematic. I've got a playlist with a bunch of videos. I'll put a link down below so you can watch that playlist. The output section of this amplifier is this right here I'm circling. Now, it's really the power side is these transistors right here. There's two of these guys in parallel and two of the PNPs in parallel. And each one has a 0.22 ohm resistor. And one of them on the board, which I'll show you, has some pins that I can measure the voltage across one of the resistors. So I can measure, monitor the current going through one branch. So this would be half of the overall bias current, okay? It'd be half of it here and half of it through this one, okay? This is the drive circuit for those transistors, those output transistors, and this is the bias network. These 4Ks, the transistors, and all that, okay? Uh, well, the Q10. So Q10, it is mounted on the heat sink between all four of these transistors. I'll show you that as well. And we have a 2K pot right here, and we're gonna, and I'm going to adjust this pot to get the current going through one of these branches, all right? So this is the bias network uh, that sets up the class A, class AB bias, whatever I want to set it to, okay? So that's what we're going to do. All right, and so my setup here, the amplifier, obviously, I have the two RCA inputs tight in parallel to this connector right here, which goes up to this unity right over here, okay? So that's my input signal, paralleling both at the same time. Then the output signals are down at the bottom, and one of them is going this 4 ohm, and one's going this 4 ohm. I'm using these two 8 ohm resistors in between to kind of help heat sink and spread out the heat. And uh, at this point, they're not too bad. The amplifier's the thing that's getting warm because I'm not really putting a signal out yet. There's no signal. It's just um, we're setting the bias. Oh, and yes, I'm using the EEV blog. Thank you, Dave, for the meter. Using that to set the bias current right there. And we'll be measuring that voltage across that resistor. I'll show you that in a moment. All right, guys, this is a little bit difficult. The potentiometer is right here, so my hands are right in front of everything as I'm trying to adjust. But what I do is I very carefully reach in here and make small adjustments and then come over here and the pads are on the board right down here. I'm gonna show you a board in a minute so you can see exactly where I'm touching. But, and I'm being very careful when I reach in here. And behind the camera, it makes it a little bit tougher even. Okay, and then I'd be very, very, very careful with the second probe. And over there, the EEV block, top right corner, you can see 85.5 milliamps. So that's about where I want it. I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit more and keep on adjusting that, but that's what I'm doing, okay? So what I wanna show you is a board. Here's another one of the boards, okay? So this is a heat spreader with the big four transistors, and this is that transistor with the pot. This is the guy that as these things change and their gain changes to keep them from going thermal runaway, to help the bias track them, we put this transistor on the heat sink right between them. So this is a big heat spreader. Uh, I keep calling it a heat sink because it's still a heat sink even though it's technically a heat spreader because then I mount this onto one of these heat sinks over there, okay? Then one over on this side. So, all right, so that's what it looks like. There's a potentiometer. All right, I kind of, zoomed in for you there's the pot and there's the transistor that's setting the bias okay then over here you can see those two pads right here and these two pads are going across this resistor see those resistors that's a 0.22 ohm resistor on each transistor okay so that's what they look like 
And these two points are measuring the voltage across this one. I'm setting that 85 or 86 millivolts across this resistor. And, you know, they all should be very similar. All right, that's what it looks like. And if you go to the other side of the board, you can kind of see these two pads right here. One trace comes along here to that side of the resistor. One comes along this side to that side. Okay, so you can see that, right? Okay, just want to show you a close-up of that. All right, and up there next to the EEV blogger behind it is the McSig oscilloscope, which I can measure or look at the signals, make sure they look good. Let me show you that. All right, guys, let me show you that. This uh, differential probes right here are kind of in the way. I'm using two sets of differential probes to look at these things. And here I've got the run stop locked in right now because we were setting the bias, so they're both set at zero right now. And I'll take one up so you can see it. Right now it's eight volts RMS, nine volts. And let's see where it starts to clip. I'm watching distortion. And right there it starts to clip. See the top of it, now the bottom of it. The top clips just before the bottom. So right about there, 14.7 volts RMS into four ohms. I can leave that there and bring up the other channel. And you can see it does the same thing. So yeah, uh, the distortion near the top is around 0.8. And around, say, 8, let me see. All right, guys, right there, we got about 8 volts on each one of them. And that is into 4 ohms. So that turns, that's about 16 watts. And that's about 0.4% THD. And if I drop them down even lower, say 4 watts. If I drop them down 4 watts for about uh, point to seven THD. All right, guys, uh, I've been sitting here for a little bit, and if I use this temperature pro for a quick measurement, if I move it around to try to get the highest temperature, I get somewhere around 51, 52 sometimes. So that's not too awful bad. Now, maybe I could let it sit here a little bit longer and see, but you know, that's starting to get kind of warm, right? I mean, you don't want to leave your hand on there for a long time. So, but it's safe. I mean, I think that's a safe temperature. That's the key. So somebody won't get burned. But 60C is really a limit from some agencies. So we got a little bit of room there. And once we start playing some music, this thing will probably warm up a little bit more. All right, so what do you guys think? Uh, pretty nice. I mean, I, I can touch this thing. It's cooling down now, but it's running a little bit cooler, and I didn't see the distortion change, but that's just one parameter. I'm going to use, in the next video, I'm going to do some testing. I'm going to use this guy, this little bad boy, the Quant Asylum QA401. I've used it, I think, only in one other video, so I need to use this more often. It's pretty fun, 24-bit audio analyzer, pretty nice. So we'll do that. If you guys know what kind of tests that you like to see me do, let me know. I think I can do a bunch of different signal type tests with this thing, and that'd be pretty neat. And maybe at the same time, I might think of something I can use a spectrum analyzer for, or, you know, yeah, and I tried to come up with some ideas. Let me know. I also have a new piece of equipment, which I'm wait I got to get a cable for it, but it's a analog precision audio analyzer. <laughs> Pretty nice. Uh, that was sent to me by a friend of the channel. He's been, in, you know, he's been with me for quite a while. Been on this channel. You guys may have seen him, the fried mule. So, thank you, fried mule. That was. Really awesome for you to send me out that piece of equipment. <sighs> Pretty amazing. I, I rarely get anything. And this one was, I mean, from a viewer. And this one is over the top. So thanks so much. And thank uh, 
And thank you to all my other patrons. Really appreciate you guys. And you can hit the thank you button the YouTube added down there. The super thanks, I think it is. There's also a membership button if you want to uh, support the channel that way. But buy me a cup of coffee through the super thanks. Appreciate it. But even if you just want to support it uh, for free, hit the uh, like button. That helps a lot too. And also, subscribe. If you think you're subscribed, just check down below. See if it says subscribe. If it does, then for some reason you got unsubscribed. I've heard that happens. If it doesn't show subscribe, you're subscribed. So appreciate that, guys. Um, let me know what you want to see me test with this because I really like to characterize this amp before I send it out because I like to use those results to compare other things too. So right now it looks like I can get what? I think it's around 54 watts in a 4 ohm. So that's awesome. That means if I'm operating a speaker around 8 ohms, I've got plenty of headroom that way. And also if I'm operating a 4 ohms, I got plenty of voltage headroom going towards 8 ohms. So uh, yeah, might be another reason why this thing sounds so good is I have so much headroom in there. So, all right, guys. Yeah, I think it's dissipating per channel about 50 something watts. Uh, you take that bias current, multiply it by 70 volts because I got plus minus 35 volt rails. Yeah, I think that comes out about 54 watts. And I did have it operating a little bit higher bias when my friend had it before. So, if he notices anything different, it'll be like, holy cow. Hopefully, I capture something with, with this or with one of the other instruments I have. But right now, the THC is not really showing anything different with the bias current. So, uh, now this amp, I did read some stuff from Nelson Pass, and I'm biasing this pretty close to the way he biases his amps. So, I'm kind of following his uh bias current levels i think pretty closely um but yeah this is also similar to nelson passes amps in this in the way that this thing also does not have global feedback it has that servo loop for dc feedback but that might be another reason why it sounds so great so i think the feedback thing might be a big deal on the negative side if it is negative the distortion goes up a little bit more but whether you can hear you know whether you can hear that or not that's that's a big question whether you know take the reins off the horses and letting them gallop you know makes a difference maybe that does so uh yeah i want to come up with some tests to see how i can characterize this thing so thanks for watching guys we'll see you next time